Hi, my name is Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Now, today we're going to talk about our QVPN service application that we have that's available for every QNAP NAS that we currently have on sale. Uh, it's a free application. It's not built in as standard. Um, so if you didn't need to use the QVPN application, it's not going to use any uh, resources um, from your NAS. Um, you do have to install it from the App Center. And as I said, it is completely free, so if you wanted to add it, if you open up your App Center and go across here to the left-hand side, the easiest way to find it is probably to go to QTS Essentials, scroll down, and alphabetically you'll find there the QVPN service. And if you don't have it installed, you'll have a little install button next to it, and it's just a single-click install, and once it's been installed, uh, it takes a couple of minutes, you're going to see the icon on the desktop of your NAS uh, user interface here. So if we open up the application, this application is actually in two parts. Uh, you've got the VPN server part, which allows uh, remote users to connect into the NAS, into the NAS network. And it also has a VPN client option, which allows the specific NAS that you're configuring it on to connect to any other remote network you have. Now that doesn't have to be to another QNAP running the VPN server. It can be to any other VPN server that you have uh, that's compatible with any of the client uh, options that we have. So we'll go through those different options now that we, we can have running uh, on the QNAP. Now these options are the same uh, for the client as well as the server. So the first one is one that you're not uh, probably familiar with, which is called QBelt. Um, this is a proprietary one that we created. It's very secure, so it's 256-bit encryption. Um, this one allows you to set the client IP pool. You can uh, specifically set the server port as well. So if you're already using the default port of 443 here um, with another service that you already have running, you can change that to anything that you want. You have to set a pre-shared key or, or shared secret as it's sometimes called. This can be really anything that you want. It's a bit like a password, but every client that needs to make a connection must know this. So they must not, they must know uh, the IP address of your server. Um, so in this case, I'm just using my NAS uh, local LAN IP, but you'll have an external IP for your internet. Uh, you have to have port forwarded the port you set here through your firewall to the NAS LAN IP address. Um, and then you have to know the, uh, the, the pre-shared key or the shared secret as well. Now you can limit the number of clients that can connect per service as well. And you can also restrict uh, this specific service to work on just one of the network interfaces on the NAS. As most of our NAS have multiple LAN ports, this allows you to be very specific with the configuration. Um, and you can also set a, a specific DNS server for anybody that connects as well. Now, QBelt can only be connected to using the applications that we create. So we have a QBelt a client application. We have this available for um, Apple Macs, uh, for Windows, and we also have it for iOS and Android for the mobile apps as well. Um, so that should cover most of the bases for anybody wanting to connect in using the QBelt protocol. Um, it's a very easy app to use. If I come over here, we can see that we've got uh, the options on our website for downloading the client for Windows and Mac. Um, and we've also got the mobile app. And here's a couple of screenshots from the mobile application. It uses the uh, the location of your device if you give it permission uh, so that you can map connections of where the server's located and where the client's connecting from. It also gives you a nice VPN speed graph so you can see how much traffic you're using over a period of time. Um, and you can see whether the connection was stable or not. And you can see how many times you connected. Did it have to reconnect? Um, and you can also log into your QNAP ID uh, within the application as well. Um, so these applications can be downloaded straight from these buttons at the bottom of the page as well for QBelt. Now moving on to the uh, extra options that we've got. So PPTP, um, this is more considered as a, uh, a legacy sort of protocol. PPTP stands for point-to-point uh, -point tunneling protocol. Um, it's the, I guess that you could call it the least secure option that we have. It's still encrypted. It's still encrypted to quite a high standard of 128-bit. Um, um, all of the other options do have 256-bit options though. Um, so you can choose the authentication type with PPTP. Now, the benefit of PPTP is most operating systems out there, whether it's um, a desktop operating system on a computer or whether it's a mobile operating system on a, on a phone or an iPad, something like that, um, most of them are going to have built right into the operating system an option to connect with a PPTP VPN connection. Um, so it's really good if you didn't want to have to install any extra software to use the VPN. It's, it's really handy for you to be able to maintain a connection uh, that's a bit more secure than just having port forwarding um, open to the NAS as well. 
If I move down to the next option here, which is the L2TP IPsec, it's very similar in the setup to QBelt, so you still need a pre-shared key or a shared secret. Um, again, you can set the maximum number of clients, and you've also got a couple of authentication options as well. Um, so L2TP IPsec is available in, in quite a lot of operating systems these days. So if you do have the, the latest copy of, of Windows, like Windows 10, or you're using the latest version of Mac OS, um, these will have L2TP options built right into the operating system as well. Now, the OpenVPN application, a uh, server option that we've got here, is different from all of the others. So the way this one works is you do have to set the server ports, um, the encryption level. Again, you can select high here if you want it more secure. Um, but the way this one works is once you set up the main settings here at the top of the screen, you have to download the configuration file. So OpenVPN themselves, they do do a number of mobile clients um, and desktop clients. So if you wanted to connect um, into an OpenVPN um, uh, VPN server connection, you do have to make sure you've got an application that supports connections with OpenVPN. Once you open up the application, you'll add a connection, and that's where you add this configuration file that you can download. So if you're the IT admin, you can download that configuration file and email it to all your users. They don't need to know anything uh, with regards to um, the remote IP address to connect to. They don't need the server port information or to pick which encryption type they have. Everything's taken care of in the configuration file. All they have to add in is the username and password for their user account, which we'll cover off in a moment as well. Um, so this is a, a very um, easy way to set up VPN if you don't mind using um, a specific application to do the connections. Now the next option here on the, at the menu on the left is called Privilege Settings. Now this is where you can choose which users on your NAS can access which services um, within the VPN server application. So when you click the Add VPN Users here, this doesn't add users to the NAS. You still have to do that the conventional way. So if you go into the control panel on your NAS and go to Users, you would have to add a user here. Um, the Add VPN Users button only picks from users that are in this list. So here I've got my colleague here, which is Tom Jeps. So if I was to go here to Add VPN Users, it's, you can see that I can add Tom Jeps to any of these specific services that I want. So if I wanted to have access to all of them, I could do that. If I do add him and want to change my mind later, I can always go through here with these tick boxes and change them around if I needed to as well. Um, the next option on the left is the online NAS users. So I've got no VPN connections currently active to this NAS, but if I start up a few connections, I've got a few devices around me. So if I connect a, a few of the different options here, um, we'll click connect on all of those. So we should see three connections coming in. And over the right hand side, you can see the protocol. Each one of them is connecting in on a different service um, to the NAS. So I've got one on OpenVPN, I've got a QBelt, and I've got an L2TP slash IPsec one connected. Um, there's now a button appeared on the right in red, which is disconnect. So if me as the admin, I wanted to uh, terminate somebody's connection, I can force disconnect them here. Um, with the option on the right. So even if their VPN is trying to connect, uh, this will um, force disconnect them uh, off the connection. So I don't have a protocol connected here with PPTP. So what I do have is I have another NAS configured here using the VPN client options down at the bottom. So if I was to go across to this other NAS that I've got set up, I do have the QVPN application installed here. And we'll go straight down to the VPN client options. So if I go look at my connection profiles, I can see that I have one configured here for PPTP. Now adding um, information here is very easy. So the boxes here where it wants you to input the different settings, they just simply have to match the server settings. So if I go over here to the PPTP, I can see that I've got everything matched that's here on the server for PPTP, and also set up here on the connection for it. Now the only thing that's extra here is the username and password. So these are the usernames and passwords for the user themselves. So that these would be the ones we were picking in the privilege settings previously. Um, so I'm not going to create that because I've already got one created. Now there's a button over here for connecting that connection. And one of the, the extra options I did just miss off is you can reconnect when the VPN connection is lost. So it's almost like a persistent connection. If the connection does ever drop uh, from the NAS it's connecting to, it will automatically try to reconnect to, to keep a connection up permanently. So if I click the connect button here, we should see all these boxes start populating with information as it starts transferring data and the connection time starts going up. So now that's connected. If I was to go back over here to the NAS and go have a look at the online NAS users, we can see we've now got a connection for each of the protocols that we do have available uh, within the uh, QVPN application. 
Now, a better way to see this might be to go look at the overview screen that we started on. So this gives you a bit more of a graphical view of who's connected to where. Um, so if I was to disconnect a few of these devices, that should start populating up um, in real time here on the screen, and the lines will start changing just to show you that they are still connected. So I, I disconnected two of the different users there, so we should see them both, uh, both drop off here so that only two remain connected. Um, so that's a very easy way to see all the different options that we've got. Now, one other thing from a, a, an admin perspective is we do have some nice connection logs as well. So if we go down here to the connection logs, it shows you who's connected, for how long they're connected, um, when they logged in, when they logged out, how much data was transmitted, and sometimes if the device allows it, um, it will show the device name as well for the, uh, uh, for the connection that was there. And you get the same for the VPN client connection log. So if I click over to, to this one that's a connection as well, we can see all the VPN uh, uh, connection logs for the client there as well. And as a global setting for the whole app, there is event logs that show you uh, different things that the admin may have done within the application, such as enabling or dis uh, disabling a service, um, changing the privilege settings for the users. Uh, so we've tried to cover all bases there within the app. Uh, so that, that ends the, that's the summary of our QVPN application. Again, it's completely free. Um, please feel free to give it a try. Um, it's a, a great option instead of um, opening up lots of ports for lots of services through your firewall to your NAS. Uh, this is a more secure option because you, you only really have to open up a couple of ports to the NAS um, for the VPN services to work. Um, and it will uh, then give you access to every service that's available within the NAS if, you, if you've chosen to allow that. Um, if you're ever having trouble finding the ports, because some of them do have the port numbers here, so you can see the UDP port, for example, or the OpenVPN port, um, there's no port listed within the PPTP or L2TP options. So if you want to find those, if you click the three dots at the top right and go to the Help section, if you scroll down a little bit and look for the PPTP or L2TP IPsec, we do list the port numbers right there. So for PPTP, it's TCP port 1723. And for L2TP IPsec, it does need three ports. So, so you've got the three UDP ports listed right there in the help article directly on the QNAP. Okay, that brings the, uh, the, the video to a close here. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.